Welcome in to the 49er Access Podcast. My name is Sterling Bennett, and I know you're looking at that thumbnail, looking at that title and saying, is he about to say Brock Purdy's a future Hall of Famer? You're saying, is he going to compare Brock Purdy to Hall of Fame quarterbacks? And the answer is no, yes, maybe. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Welcome into the podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm in a new place uh, for a maybe one-off show. Went from my bedroom at 11 p.m. at night to my living room at 11 a.m. during the day. So stick with me through this. If you like the new view, let me know on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today on the show, on the podcast. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave that review. And let's jump into what is the meat and potatoes of today's show. So on Twitter, on X, I posted, I tweeted, and I asked people, asked my followers, asked you guys, how big of a sample size do we need to see from Brock Purdy? Uh, how many games, seasons, how many you know Dallas Cowboys teams does he have to beat before we call him the guy? Uh, the team has already called him the guy. Kyle Shanahan's already called him the quote-unquote real deal, but as fans, as media members like myself, how many games, how many seasons, how many playoff victories or losses will it take before we finally buy in and call him a franchise quarterback? Now, some of you are already there. Some fans have already stated that he's a guy I've known since last season. Uh, Everything he's shown thus far has proven to be true that he can be a franchise quarterback in the NFL. This podcast and this show really isn't for you in a way. Uh, It might be in a sense of reproving your point or maybe reestablishing or kind of uh, backing up your already proven statement or the statement you think is proven. But this is more so for the fans, the media members, the national media that don't believe Brock Purdy is a franchise quarterback just yet. And yes, There are so many things Brock Purdy still has to prove, which is why I asked the question, how long, how much more do we need to see? Some fans said, like maybe you have, we're already bought in. Some fans said, he has to beat the Cowboys in week five. Other fans said, I need a full season. And some crazier fan says, if he doesn't have two complete seasons and a Super Bowl, he's not the guy. Well, winning a championship is obviously the most important goal in the NFL. And I'm sure if you ask Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, if you don't win a ring the next few years, is it a failure? The answer is more likely going to be yes than no. And the reason why I ask this is because there are still people out there saying that put any other quarterback in the system and watch them flourish. And while, yes, Kyle Shanahan plays in a very... Uh, quarterback-friendly system. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo play well. We've seen at times Nick Mullins played well in 2018 for a very short spurt. Uh, Even C.J. Beathard has his minute moments throughout his tenure in San Francisco. And now we have Brock Purdy, albeit in eight games, uh, being undefeated, showing that he can be something really special in this system. And, And yes, I'm sure you plug in Tua Tagovailoa and Justin Herbert and other elite quarterbacks Uh, They'll flourish here as well, and maybe even someone like a Mac Jones, who I know fans hate out there, but um, there isn't really anything to disprove in that statement, but what it is to say is that we've also seen Nick Mullins, despite his success, play really, really poorly. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo, despite his really this all-time level career percentage when it comes to wins for a San Francisco 49ers still struggle in big moments. And for Brock Purdy to play well in the playoffs and still be undefeated against top defenses like the Cowboys, the Buccaneers last year, Washington, and now the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, it truly is a sight to behold. While only eight games, a small sample size, you already have fans saying he's the guy. The team, again, has already bought into him being their franchise quarterback. You've heard Brandon Ayuk on KMBR saying he has it. Um, And we've heard that before here in San Francisco with Jimmy Garoppolo. And so there might be some PTSD there for some fans. And again, there's still so many things that Brock Purdy has to prove. But again, how much more do we really need to see? And 
I went through the history books. I went through the the annals of NFL history the past, well, I don't know, 20 years, and I picked two other quarterbacks that had stellar rookie seasons that have brought Purdy is going to have a career like these two players, I don't think anybody would complain. Um, in fact, if Brock Purdy has a career like these two players, he'll have at least one Super Bowl, a couple of all pros, a handful of Pro Bowls, and lead the San Francisco 49ers as their third best quarterback of all time behind Joe Montana and Steve Young. Now look, I am not going to read these stats off to you and just say Brock Purdy is going to be those guys. There is so much more work to do. Just because you play an amazing eight first games of your career doesn't mean the next t- 10 or eight are solidified as you're going to be awesome. And even some of these guys, their first eight games weren't their best. They picked up their play and, again, had an amazing career afterwards or or in the midst of still having an amazing career where they currently play. So I'm going to read you off some stats, and I'm going to leave these quarterbacks nameless at first. Then I'll give you the names, and I want you to tell me which quarterback you would take of the three. Quarterback number one, through his first eight career games, record 8-0, and a 65% completion percentage, 245 yards per game, 20 touchdowns, four turnovers, and a 112 rating. Okay, that's quarterback number one. Probably an easy guess as to who that quarterback might be, but stick around here for a second. Quarterback number two, record 7-1, and one, a 68% completion percentage, 181 yards per game, 12 total touchdowns, seven turnovers, and a rating of 101. Okay, that's quarterback number two. Between quarterback number one and quarterback number two, who would you rather have? Now here's quarterback number three. Quarterback number three, record only four and four, a 61.4% completion percentage, 183 yards per game, 10 touchdowns, 10 total turnovers, and an 82.4 rating. Those are the stats, okay? Would it help that if quarterback number three, I told you, made it to the NFL playoffs and lost in the divisional round. Does that change your mindset? Quarterback number two, he won the Super Bowl his rookie season. Does that change your mindset? Does that change your pick of quarterback three and quarterback two? Then quarterback one, throughout his career, he's made it to an NFC championship game. He's won two playoff games, but ultimately, excuse me, ultimately lost in the NFC Championship game. Does it change who you'd pick? And I'm sure you're asking, okay, Sterling, I know who these guys are, and the first one's pretty obvious. The first one, quarterback number one, is Brock Purdy. Quarterback number one's stats supplant, surpass almost every category that quarterback number two and quarterback number three had through their first eight games of their career. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because the next two people I'm going to name, while it may not shock you, it will give you an idea as to how good, how great Brock Purdy has been through his first eight career games. Quarterback number two, again, record 7-1, and 68% completion percentage, 181 yards per game, 12 total touchdowns, 7 turnovers, 101 quarterback rating. That, my friends, is Ben Roethlisberger, arguably, if not the second best. He's the best quarterback in Pittsburgh Steelers franchise history. Quarterback number three, four and four record, 61.4% completion percentage, 183 yards per game, 10 TDs, 10 turnovers, and an 82.4 rating. That quarterback is Russell, Mr. Unlimited Wilson. I am not saying Brock Purdy is going to be those quarterbacks, but I can guarantee you the Pittsburgh Steelers, now I get draft status matters here, but don't forget, Big Big Ben, and a run-heavy scheme, Jerome Bettis, Willie Parker, he had Heinz Ward. He had a good team around him. Again, didn't ask him to do too much. Brock Purdy's outplayed him 
through their first eight games. Russell Wilson, a quarterback that you could argue was drafted lower than he should have been, knowing now what he's become. But it's not like the Seattle Seahawks knew what they had. But once they got a glimpse of him, once they saw what he can do in training camp and practice with the ones and the twos and the threes, they told Matt Flynn, sorry, sucker, we don't care how much we paid you. You're, you're the backup quarterback. Russell Wilson's our guy. Brock Purdy has outplayed Russell Wilson. In fact, he already has more playoff wins than Russell Wilson had through his first eight games. Now, again, no one is saying Brock Purdy is going to be Russell freaking Wilson or Ben Roethlisberger, but what I'm saying here is that for those of you who are not completely bought in, for those of you who are saying, well, Big Ben was a first-round pick, you're right. Russell Wilson, a one-time Super Bowl champion, probably should have been an MVP winner, You're right. Those two guys have legacies in the NFL. One of them we know, unfortunately, very well here in San Francisco. But what I'm telling you is Brock Purdy has outplayed players that we pointed to instantly and said, that is the guy who the team themselves said, oh my goodness, we have something here. Um, I understand the history of quarterbacks in San Francisco hasn't been too kind to us when it comes to the post-Steve Young era. Uh, We thought we had a guy in Jeff Garcia. He flamed out a little too early, in my opinion. You had Jimmy G, who got hurt a couple times, and we know the history he's had here with Kyle Shanahan, and you know they're back and forth of injuries and whatnot. We had Trey Lance for a very small, minute time here in San Francisco, and things didn't work out. Now, he's in Dallas. We had Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick so close with Smith and Kaepernick against the Ravens, uh, I believe in 2013 or the 2013 Super Bowl. But we've been there. We've seen that. The quarterback history has been almost haunting us in San Francisco. And now we're sitting back with this quarterback in Brock Purdy who isn't the biggest, isn't the strongest, kind of built like Russell Wilson, maybe not as, you know, bulked up, you could say, but is doing things like Russell Wilson, is doing things that, like, as a Niner fan, we sat back and watched Russell Wilson evade Ahmed Brooks and Alden Smith for, what, three or four or five years here in San Francisco, run back 15 yards, fumble the football, somehow pick it back up and find Javon Curse and, and lock it and, and Doug Baldwin's and 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 Golden Tate's for 30-yard gain saying, how the heck did that just happen? Now, I'm not saying Brock Purdy is going to do that, but I do think Brock Purdy, when it comes to evading pressure, pocket awareness, he has a little Russell Wilson to him. The arm strength is very different, mind you. Again, I'm not comparing them physically, but it's the intangible traits they have. The Again, the pocket awareness, the evasiveness, the... Um, <laughs> the agility, the elusiveness of evading Minka Fitzpatrick's and other top end defenders in the NFL to to run to to your left and run back to your right and run through the entire offense and defensive line to find Brandon Ayuk in the back of the end zone in the playoffs. Now that doesn't count because it was dropped, but we watched that live and still say, "Wow, he's not the guy." Now. Again, I am by no means cementing Brock Purdy as a Hall of Famer. Brock Purdy is nowhere near (laughs) being a Hall of Famer. In fact, Mark Sanchez probably has more of a a claim to that title, and we know how good he actually was with the Jets uh, over Brock Purdy. But right now, through eight games, my point to you in reading those stats is to say Brock Purdy's career trajectory is higher and more successful than future Hall of Famers in Ben Roethlisberger and Russell Wilson, and I do think there are some similarities in the situations or the play style of the teams and quarterbacks I've just listed. Um, Again, Pittsburgh, a run-heavy, non-quarterback-reliant system. Just keep the drive moving. Don't do too much. Russell Wilson, similar. Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode, hand it off, you know, 30 times a game and let him do the dirty work. And when we're asking you to, make a big play. But we're not, we're not going to need you to do that. And I think Brock Purdy's in that situation. He has Brandon Ayuk and, and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey and, 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 and Devo Samuel making big plays for him where 
really, Brock Purdy is arguably this team's, I don't know, fifth best playmaking uh, player on offense. He is this team's, you know, he's the starting quarterback. But in reality, when you mention San Francisco, you don't really mention Brock Purdy when it comes to how star-studded the offense is. Um, people are more prone to point to how good the defense is over mentioning Brock Purdy here in San Francisco, and I totally get that. But what I want to continue to push on to you and relate to you is that we are still seeing something unprecedented. Uh, it's not just Mr. Irrelevant, last pick in the draft, doing something we've never seen before. What this is, is potentially, and I'm not going to say he's Tom Brady 2.0, that's the greatest quarterback of all time, next to Joe Montana in my opinion, but what Brock Purdy's doing is something that we've never seen since Tom Brady. Now, Brock Purdy could easily just fan out and, and we're sitting back saying flash in the pan, but what he's done thus far makes me believe that's not the case, and I think many others, including Kyle Shanahan himself, including Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle, have said themselves they believe in Brock Purdy. He is indeed the guy that they're sitting here today wondering or sitting here today in a position where for the first time, maybe since 2017, that they've completely bought into a quarterback um, pre-injury. And I can even argue that this team has bought into Brock Purdy as much, if not more than Jimmy Garoppolo, who led them to a championship. I know that stands at least for Kyle Shanahan. He is, like, we are in the honeymoon phase. Uh, the longest honeymoon phase for Kyle Shanahan and any quarterback. And many of you might say, well, well 2017 to 2019 for Garoppolo. Uh, Kyle Shanahan and Garoppolo, after they paid Garoppolo big money, he ghosted them. And, well, you think it's a good or bad thing? Shanahan got pissed off and didn't like that. That was kind of their first initial brush up of, hey, I don't like the way you're doing things. People point back to Matt Ryan in, 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 in Atlanta. Their first year, they butted heads. They didn't like each other. We are through officially eight games, a half a season of play, and Brock Purdy and Kyle Shanahan are holding hands. They're, they're kumbaya on their vacationing on their honeymoon in Sicily on the gondolas in Italy. Like, I don't know what the songs are, but, you know, oh, my, my, zoop, zoop, my, like, they're, they're singing it out there with the gondolas and the candlelight and the amazing sunsets on the gondolas, eating pizza or pasta, whatever you want to call it, cannolis. They're having a great grand time where they're undefeated with each other. They, they feed off each other. They buy in to what each other is selling, and the team is doing that as well. And I do think that was something that Ben Roethlisberger and Russell Wilson have in common. Uh, now, more so Russell Wilson being a, a mid-round pick where, hey, you're not supposed to be our starting quarterback. You were not who was pitched to us to begin the year, but you proved yourself in camp and practice. Brock Purdy proved himself when two quarterbacks in front of him went down. But in their small, you know, you have to grab the brass ring moments, both of them did that. Um, I think Brock Purdy and Russell Wilson have very similar playing styles where, not the biggest guy, ain't the fastest guy. And while they they definitely have different physical traits, Russell Wilson has an amazing throwing arm uh, and an and amazing deep ball. I do think Brock Purdy has that annoyance to defenses that Russell Wilson has. We heard Micah Parsons, star defensive player and maybe even defensive player of the year candidate this year for the Dallas Cowboys say that, you know, we're not sleeping on Brock Purdy anymore. People are coming for him like Aaron Rodgers, who – you know, RIP got hurt, your season's over with, but, and also Patrick Mahomes. I do think that Brock Purdy, again, not having these physical, amazing traits of a cannon for an arm or blazing speed like, like Lamar Jackson, we are seeing a player that is starting to annoy defenses who you see someone like, again, Russell Wilson. We know what that's like to have him dead to rights and somehow he finds a way. A Brock Purdy, I think, is becoming that in front of our eyes, and if he isn't that for the fans of this team in San Francisco, I do think for teams like the Steelers and the Cowboys, and I think what would have been Philadelphia had they won or lost that game, there would have been this respect finally put on Brock Purdy's name where even TJ Hushmanzada, who played for the Bengals and the Seahawks, who has never shared the field with Brock Purdy, said draft status 
doesn't matter. I'm over it. If a guy can play, he can play. And I find it funny that in San Francisco, we've seen players like Jordan Mason, right? We've seen players like Matt Breida, um, Jeff Wilson Jr., and plenty of other, Emmanuel Mosley. Guys who were undrafted come in and shine in their roles, running backs and quarterbacks, and plenty of others along the way. But when a quarterback does that, we go, oh my goodness, this guy, nope, not buying in. And, and, and I get it. Kurt Warner's and Tom Brady's don't come along very often. But it's very fitting, don't you think, that San Francisco is trying to find their quarterback and Trey Lance and try to trade for Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford and pay big money for a guy. Kyle Shanahan, dating back to 2017, wanted to pay Kirk Cousins big money. And a new report shows he wanted to give up the second overall pick that year, which became Solomon Thomas, and eventually added on Reuben Foster for Kirk Cousins. Kyle Shanahan, for a long time, has been trying to find that franchise quarterback, and it's fitting that the mantra for finding running backs, or at least in previous years prior to Christian McCaffrey, has been undrafted players. Now for the quarterback to be that same thing where he finally finds his quarterback to be the seventh round pick, last pick in the draft, but he's playing and he's, he's just slinging that thing everywhere and playing well. Brock Purdy has, at least against Pittsburgh, mind you, has made throws. The Brandon Ayuk play uh, in the end zone, back shoulder over, over Patrick Peterson, the, the play where he runs through the pocket and finds Debo Samuel for a first down. He's making elite-level throws where I'm sitting here saying, hey, if his play shows elite levels at times and is overall really good, his historical statistics surpass future bona fide Hall of Famers and Ben Roethlisberger and Russell Wilson, how can we have him bought in just yet? Um, many fans um, that want to discount Brock Purdy point to the dink and dunk method of the offense. And I, and I think much of that is because Jimmy Garoppolo played here for so long. That's the offense we've known through Kyle Shanahan. And, it, and it's the offense that was supposed to change with Trey Lance. We, we never got to see it. So we have reverted back to it's only dink and dunk. He doesn't have a big arm. He's not pushing the ball down the field. And, and that's just not true. Brock Purdy against the Pittsburgh Steelers on targets past the sticks. 11 for 13, 168 yards, two touchdowns, and a perfect 158.3 passer rating. Again, the dink and dunk quota, the, 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 the dink and dunk title put next to his name is untrue. Um, also, people point to him having this amazing offense. If Christian McCaffrey carried him, uh, yeah, Chris McCaffrey's an amazing running back who makes big plays. So was Marshawn Lynch. Nobody was saying Marshawn Lynch carried Russell Wilson for the majority of their time together. Nobody was saying that Willie Parker and Rashad Mendenhall and D'Angelo Williams were carrying Big Ben. Now, yes, that was later in their career, mind you, but it wasn't as if through eight games the same thing wasn't happening to Big Ben and Russell Wilson, but look at Brock Purdy's stats again. They're so much better. Brock Purdy averages 60 more yards a game through the air than those two quarterbacks, has almost, if not double, a little over double the touchdowns and half the turnovers. Brock Purdy has played a very clean, efficient style of offense that's been explosive, that has scored a ton of points. And again, for Brock Purdy, his it's not like the team played perfect against the Steelers. In fact, Brock Purdy had the number one ranked QBR behind the 24th ranked pass protection in week one. So it wasn't all butterflies and rainbows perfect for Purdy. In fact, it really wasn't that pretty in pass protection for the second year eight, you know, nine game quarterback. Uh, in Brock Purdy. So it wasn't all perfect. And to give you some more statistics, <laughs> um, the Niners averaged just 2.7 four, yard, four yards of yak 
per completion. This entire Shanahan arrow, they have Debo and they have Kittle and Ayuk and McCaffrey. It's going to be so yak heavy. And in previous years, it certainly has been, which to me shouldn't be a knock on a quarterback. But at times you can point to yak as there is a lot of air yards. The offense isn't explosive. They aren't pushing the ball down the field. Again, very, well, the offense is dink and dunk. That's all it is. But in fact, on Sunday against Pittsburgh, the Niners 2.74 yards of yak per completion ranked 31st, second lowest in the NFL in week one and the second lowest since Kyle Shanahan arrived in 2017. In fact, another idea and another do, uh, knock on Brock Purdy has been, well, the receivers are always open. He's not throwing in, into tight windows. And in fact, yes, you can point to Kyle Shanahan making quarterbacks jobs easy and having windows open. That's one of the bigger things I pointed to and how Sam Darnold's turnover prone play in the past can be kind of dwindled down and limited here because Shanahan can help him so much. But for Brock Purdy on Sunday against Pittsburgh, in fact, the Niners had the 28th ranked average separation per pass. They weren't wide open. There were tight window throws made by Brock Purdy. They were the 30th in pressure percentage and 31st in yak again. And yet Brock Purdy still had the highest ranked QBR. So all of this to say, a half an hour to say, that the dink and dunk you know, title put next to Brock Purdy's led offense is a myth. He's forcing the ball downfield. He's throwing into tight windows, and he's also being explosive. The eight games through his career where fans point to and say, it's not enough. I need a full season. I need two seasons. He has to beat the Dallas Cowboys and win a championship for me to finally buy into him. All of those things are valid to a certain extent. I get this is a Super Bowl or bust year in San Francisco. Again, I get all those things. But the stats prove he's better through eight games than elite quarterbacks in the NFL throughout their prime in Big Ben and Russell Wilson. The dink and dunk method or the dink and dunk title is a myth next to his name. And we are sitting back here eight games into his career living in the honeymoon phase, which I don't think is going to end on Sunday against the Rams. The way the Giants played against the Cowboys in week one, don't think it's going to end there. Then you have the Cardinals who suck. Don't think it's going to end there. Then you have the Dallas Cowboys. All I'm saying here is we can be sitting here by week five, and Brock Purdy could be 12-0, 11-0 through his career. Is that going to be enough then? Has what I laid out for you today been enough to kind of get behind him as a quarterback? And if you already are behind him, you can use this to back your point up. I do think that, yes, Brock Purdy has so much left to prove. He has to play from behind a couple more times. He has to win a championship, win multiple playoff games, beat top-end defenses. He'll, and he'll be tested this year. We have Dallas. The Ravens, the Eagles, Seattle twice, the Rams twice, who looked better than they were last year. They were going to be tests. The Bengals, the Browns, they were going to be tests this year for Brock Purdy to cement himself as the guy, as the franchise quarterback, if you aren't already on board. But I do think that right now, in a very small eight-game sample size, we need to start... I don't want to say giving Brock Purdy credit, but I think we need to stop questioning him as the quarterback. We shouldn't be surprised that he's succeeding. He has done so every step of the way with flying covers. Colors, excuse me. Like, name one game he's not played well in. You can't. Even the game they almost lost, they came back and beat the Raiders, and Brock Purdy paid, played really well. He put up 320 passing yards against the Seahawks in the playoffs. He played good enough to win a playoff game against the Cowboys. And again, I've always pointed to this. Why are we limiting Brock Purdy just being who he is now? Why can't he not get better throughout his second year in the NFL? 
Dandry is behind him. He looks healthy as can be. And he's pushing the ball down the field and debunking every knock on him. I've seen quarterback rankings today being September 13th, 2023, after Brock Purdy put up 30 points against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, who many, including myself, said they should be a top 10 unit this year. After beating the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs, after annihilating the Seahawks twice last year, once in the playoffs. I've seen lists with him being quarterback number 22 behind Kenny Pickett, Derek Carr, Mac Jones, Russell Wilson right now at least. I've seen him behind Justin Fields who can't throw 15 yards accurately, who can't beat the Packers. For whatever reason, there is still some disrespect now on the opposite side. There are fans saying, I'd take Josh Allen or I'd take Brock Purdy over Josh Allen. Well, I certainly wouldn't take Josh Allen against the Jets over Brock Purdy, but Josh Allen has proven to be a far better quarterback overall. But that also doesn't mean Brock Purdy can't become a top 10, top 5 quarterback in the league. And there might be a real debate there. We could see that happen this year. We truly could. And again, a shorter podcast today, but I did want to show you and, and let you know that Brock Purdy is like what he's doing is historical. We have not seen this before. Um, I was on the air on Sunday at 95-7 the game for postgame uh, after the Niners killed the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I brought up this may be the most impressive eight-game stretch of a quarterback's career. The first, you know, first eight games. And someone pushed back and said, relax, Big Ben. The stats prove. Now, the ending might be different. This team may not win a Super Bowl. They have a good chance, though. They may not go to the playoffs. They will. They may not win two games. They, they can lose in the first round against the Cowboys, the Eagles. There's so much more to come. But right now, Brock Purdy, through eight games, this is the most impressive stretch from a quarterback to start his career. Are you buying in yet? Have you already bought in? Am I swaying you into the way of Brock Purdy? You know, like the Mandalorian, this is the way. Brock Purdy is the way. Kyle Shanahan's already done it. The team's already done it. They've said he has it. And I truly believe that like, what we're seeing here is magical, historical. And I hope, I hope that it ends with him surpassing and matching Ben Roethlisberger's rookie season. I hope it surpasses Russell Wilson's rookie season. And I can argue it already has surpassed Russell Wilson's. But go out there every single Sunday, Monday, and Thursday and prove this thing to be right. And hopefully, by week five or six, when we're five, six, and oh, hopefully, he has won more and more people over because we may have the real deal here in San Francisco. And draft status shouldn't matter. The play on the field is what truly matters. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching on YouTube. I really appreciate you tuning into the podcast every single week. Put up big numbers previewing and reacting to that Niners win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you so much. I want to ask one thing of you. Like, share, and subscribe to the audio version of the podcast and the video version of the podcast. I want to reach 500 subscribers before week two of the NFL season this Sunday at 1 p.m., I want to see that big 500 on my YouTube. Uh, let's keep spreading the word of the podcast. Let's keep sharing some love to the pod. And also, let's keep being the faithful and coming together as fans and hopefully celebrating a lot of wins and this team going forward. My name is Sterling Bennett. You can follow me on social media. Follow the show on social media at 49ers underscore access is the Twitter. 49ers dot access is the Instagram. You can also use our promo code 49ers access. 49ERSACCESS at SeatGeek.com. If you want to go to SoFi Stadium this Sunday, you want to go to Levi Stadium next Thursday against the Giants, or any concert, baseball, football, basketball, does not matter. 
Use that promo code and save yourself $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek.com. If you want to buy some Niners merch, you want to get a CMC jersey, a Brandon Ayuk NFC Offensive Player of the Week jersey, congratulations to him. Go to our link up above or down below in the description at fanatics.com. You can buy some merch and support the show in the meantime, one last time telling you this is the 49er Access Podcast. My name is Sterling Bennett, and until next time, stay faithful.